transform myself into someone else for a period of time. You're perpetually sort of like holding space for in, in acting and in performing. You can craft a story and a character, layer in all of these uh, textures and intentions and objectives and all of these other things to, to bring a story to life to the audience. And you were studying visual arts at the time. Did any of that mm -hmm. kind of transfer over? Like, or do you see them as two completely different things? Yeah, I still, there's lots of things that I feel like transfer. I'm, I'm a visual learner. Like a lot of actors learn their lines, listening to them on tape or using one of the apps you can get where the other lines are said out loud and you're responding. I do an initial, like learning the beats of a scene, but for the line work, I write them over and over handwritten. I have notebooks that look like. I'm losing my mind. I just write them over and over and over and over in different handwritings. And that's how I get them in my head. And that's sort of how I process their meaning. Likewise, when I'm trying to, if I turn this around, you'd see 6,000 jigsaw puzzles. I do visual things with my hands often while I'm contemplating scenes that I'm struggling with and trying to figure out. And, and also, I guess the other similarity is that I, I go macro to micro the same as one does when they're painting you're sort of blocking in the major colors and the and the areas and the rough sketch and then you're fine-tuning 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 until you're getting like little little bits and details so those two are similar as well is there an example that comes to mind of like different types of handwriting or these different notebooks that like you use for like kim wexler as an example I did use all capital block print for Kim and almost always. And we did have a, a wonderful <laughs> props person, Chelsea, who had to learn my handwriting when those post-its had to be duplicated 50, a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, I definitely will like attach certain handwritings to people, but I also in my scripts, I'm working on a script today, sometimes certain prints or fonts or back slants or forward slants or cursive or print will I'll, I'll use it to sort of catalog my different notes, like intentions versus musings or things meant to research versus things to spur me on the day. I just use different handwritings for all of them. As an actor, I believe in, in what, I, what I transfer and transmit is an energetic frequency. I do that as a human being. And I believe you can feel that frequency, uh, which is why I like to do different kinds of roles from one to another. And which is why I also choose many times to do work worlds that with a character that says very little, because words can only take us so far. It's really the transference and the sharing of emotion and feeling that take us further. And I've learned that as I've progressed in my career, that that's something that's very satisfying to me. Can you talk a little more about what that means to kind of fell on purpose? Is it is it because it's the first instinct of the character, or is it maybe the like the further most out limits outer limits of the character? Any any other thoughts going to mind? There are the broad strokes of a character that you read when you read something the first time that appeal to you. I believe that actors love to act, which means we love to overact, and and because we want to somehow exercise some of the demons inside of us and get that out because it's a big stage and we are in control of that, especially when we're in the theater, the director can't come and stop you. So you get a chance to get that emotion out and it feels good, but it's not always the way to do it. And so for me, I find on a cursory glance, the character looks like this. But when I start digging deeper, I start asking deeper questions. And those deeper questions lead me to what, far beyond what just the character does for a living, but what has this character's life been like? What are the traumas that have affected him? How has he been able to make the decisions and come to making the decisions he makes that affect all of those around him? And that, to me, is important to see and not just say. And so that's the backstory of doing your homework that allows you to come to the stage, come before the camera, completely filled up. Because all of those things are within your consciousness, just as they are for you and I as human beings in our daily walk of life. So you mentioned liking to you know play those roles where maybe there's less dialogue, you can do more acting around the emotions of the scene. 
Are you surprised? Like I can think of villains when I think of that. Are you surprised that you're so known for some of the iconic villains you played? I'm not surprised um, because I've always, not always, but I, I think I'm a complicated human being. And the more I realize that, the more patience I have to go on the journey with myself to understand that complication. I'm intense. Um, I am I'm very light on one hand, but very serious on the other. I like to get it done. I like to be paying attention. I don't walk through things. And it doesn't mean I don't have as much fun. It just means I'm aware of the complicated nature of my makeup. That is comes from my upbringing and how I was raised in a world that didn't really accept me. So that leads me to playing some very complicated, interesting villains um, because there's a part of me that has a little resentment for never being accepted as a black Italian, as an African-American kid who had, who didn't realize until his adulthood that he was more fierce from his Neapolitan background than he was from his black background until I went to Napoli and I realized, oh my God, this is the gangster side of me. Um, it's not all Harlem, New York, where I did grow up for a period of time, or the Bronx or Westchester. Um, it's not just from my ancestry of being black, it's from my ancestry also of being Italian and being a fierce human being. And so um, all that to say, I think for many years, there's been an angry kernel inside me um, for not having been understood in this place that we call America. You know, I came here when I was five, six years old to America, and it wasn't like I was embraced with open arms because I wasn't understood. And I started to understand America through the lens of someone who peered in and didn't really get why there was this black and white issue didn't, until I started to understand the tribal nature of territory. And you're not from around here, you know? And then I started to get it a little more. And so I think in my early years of acting, much of, of that anger started to seep out and because it needed to be vented, it needed to get away from me. Some people in theater, it's the audience is one thing, and then shifting from movie and TV is something different. But for you, it was more about the role you're saying? I think it was about the role, but actually, I, I won't lie. And it was a it was the comedy of errors of the Shakespeare play. And it was it's kind of that sink or swim feeling of if you commit and you do it well, you're so connected to the audience and you get that audience feedback and you get laughs at your jokes and you know when it's working and you're and there's that like the bounce between you and your cost and everything. And and that's another part of the intoxication is just like this immediacy of of of, of connection and feedback and everything and then in other roles sometimes it's just the like forgetting knowing the audience is there but feel it's the same thing I have sometimes with the camera where you can be and I have experienced nerves when you roll and then you have to switch your brain or I get to switch my brain into thinking I'm not performing for a camera. I'm having an intimate moment with the lens and it's just the lens and I, and it's like just the camera and I, and then that extends to the little bubble of like, okay, so it's just me and the camera operator and this camera and we're having this private conversation. And the more I can sort of like lean into it, the more it feels like a, an opportunity to be really honest or not honest. That sounds so cheesy. It, an opportunity to be like revealed. And I think it can be the same thing I think it could be the same thing in each medium. Yeah, I think you're ultimately chasing like a very private experience with your viewer, with your audience, with as participant. And it's it's really just like, and then that's something to recreate for the audience. Like sometimes I still get amazed when I watch something and it feels so found and so so private and then you're like but there were 73 people around making all this stuff look this way and feel feel spontaneous when it was all very carefully orchestrated to allow for spontaneity <laughs> was, was there a point like was it the role of maggie where you felt like you could ma definitely make a career out of it or was it something before that that kind of felt like that um, i didn't 
it's so funny. Like I don't, I honestly, all along the way, I just don't remember making decisions. I remember like, I remember, I mean, like the first audition I did was so fun. And it was, again, it was that thing. It was like, it was something for the BBC and it was like a, a smaller thing, a smaller show, but we were just in a room doing an audition and we were all laughing together. And I was like, it's just fun. I think I've always just been chasing the fun. I think I've always just been chasing when you really connect with people. I mean, it's just so much fun, like whether it's something tragic and it's, but it's that win that you feel collectively when you're actually mining something and, 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 uh, and just like cracking it open and, and, and finding something bigger than the sum of all parts, all of its parts, because I remember just like auditioning and you sort of like go through and sometimes they, they fit, sometimes they don't, sometimes Sometimes I sort of, you know, would succeed or not succeed in just, you know, auditioning for different roles and you can force it and you want, you want it to be the thing. And then every now and again, the one that does fit where you're, I mean, it's honestly, it's like you walk in the room and you're either the thing people are looking for or you're not. And that's the whole game in the beginning is like not taking it personal game in the beginning, the whole game, the whole time um, is not taking anything personally.